This is section 3.1, quadratic functions, also known as parabolas. And so I want to go ahead and start with a sketch of what a parabola looks like. So here are the general sketch, something like this. We've actually sketched parabolas before in an earlier section. Let me draw a better one real quick. We've actually drawn parabolas in previous sections. So the lowest point on this parabola is called the vertex. Then we have something called the axis of symmetry, and the axis of symmetry is where the parabola um, has a reflection or where it um, is symmetrical. So this side right here is symmetrical to that side. This is called the axis of symmetry. The parabola can also open down like this. And in this case, this would be a vertex right here. That would be the highest point. You still have an axis of symmetry, which would be right here. Now the axis of symmetry has an equation with a vertical line. And we dot it because it's not really part of the graph, it's not really part of the parabola, but it's a line that we can look at. And it's the equation x equals some number. Let's go to the standard form of a quadratic function, and that looks like this. f of x equals a x minus h squared plus k, and a cannot equal 0. If you have a standard uh, form of a quadratic function, then these values have special meaning. Um, this a value here, if a is positive, then we know that the parabola opens up like this. If a is negative, then we know the parabola opens down like that. Also, um, this value here, um, h and k, is your vertex. So if you have h comma k, this would be your vertex. And then your axis of symmetry, would be the value of h. The axis of symmetry would be the equation x equals h. Okay. So for example, what do we know about this um, quadratic function right here? We know that if we have this written here, we have this a value here, this tells me that the quadratic function or the parabola opens down because this right here is negative. We know the vertex is going to be negative 9 comma negative 2. I got the negative 9 because the, the standard form has x minus h and here the only values I have here would be a negative 9 which would give me that plus 9 back. So this would have to be negative 9 and the k value is right here so negative 9 comma negative 2. And the axis of symmetry would be x equals negative 9. Because again, it's this h value right here. Well, again, this h value has to be negative 9. Okay, let's do example 1. And I want you to graph this quadratic function. And there are actually four steps to doing this. The first step is to always determine whether it opens up or down. So in this case here, since this value a is negative, we know that it opens down. Second thing we want to do is we want to look for the vertex. And the vertex is going to be 3 comma h. And this is in the format of x minus h. So the h value is 3, the k value is 8. So the vertex is 3, 8. We also want to find the axis of symmetry. And in this case, the axis symmetry would be x equals this h value, which would be 3. Okay. Third thing we want to find is we want to find the x-intercept. So remember, when we find x-intercept, you want to sub in 0 for y. Okay. So now we have 0 equals negative 2 x minus 3 squared plus 8. 
I'm going to solve this, and I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and add 8 to both sides, or subtract 8 from both sides. So I'm going to get rid of this. So I have negative 8 equals negative 2 x minus 3 squared. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 2. So I get 4 equals x minus 3 squared because these two negative 2s reduce this gives you negative um, this gives you this reduces and this gives you 4 on the side now I don't have to do this but I'm going to go ahead and reverse this because I'm used to seeing this this format here so 4 equals this well this would equal 4 so I wrote that now do you remember that property that we can use to solve for x here it's something we learned back in um, I believe the first chapter we can use the square root property. It's a special case. So we know that x minus 3 equals plus or minus square root of 4. So x minus 3 equals plus or minus 2. So x is going to equal, and add, if I add 3 to both sides, so x is going to equal 3 plus or minus 2. So x equals 3 plus 2 or x equals 3 minus 2, so x equals 5, or x equals 1. Okay. So my x-intercepts are 5, 0, and 1, 0. The fourth step, and I'm going to go ahead and do it up here, is to find the y-intercept. The y-intercept, you're going to sub 0 for So I'm going to go ahead and in this problem here, I'm going to sub zero for x. f of zero equals negative two zero minus three squared plus eight. So um, y. Remember, f of zero is just y, or f of x equals y. It's going to give me negative two times negative three squared plus eight. This right here is going to be nine. Negative three times negative three is nine. So here's 9. Okay, so I get y equals negative 2 times 9 plus 8. So I get y equals negative 18 plus 8, and y equals negative 10. So the y-intercept is 0, negative 10. Okay, so all those steps together will give me, our, or give me enough information to graph that parabola. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and graph the vertex, which we know is 3, 8. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, should be right there. So I'm going to label that 3, 8. And then I'm going to go ahead and label the axis of symmetry. Well, I'll do axis symmetry in a minute. Let's go ahead and graph the x-intercepts. X-intercepts are 5, 0, and 1, 0. So 1, 0 is right here. And 5, 0 is right here. So 5, 0, 1, 0. And the y-intercept is 0, negative 10. Right here. And then let's go ahead and label the axis symmetry. We're doing different colors. Axis symmetry, the line um, x equals 3. And again, I'm going to make this line it's not a solid line because we know that um, it's not part of my graph. It's just where the um, graph is symmetrical. So it's the axis of symmetry. X equals 3. Okay. Now I sketch this graph here. I'm going to go ahead and sketch it. This parabola is going to open down, which we said in the beginning that the graph would open down, the parabola open down. So let's see what happens. It looks like it's going to reconnect this. Oops. Now I want to find another point, like here if I connect this and graph it here um, with the rest of the parabola, oops. 
I want to find another point right here and make this a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and think at a point zero, negative 10 here. But I want the metrical to this side. It's one, two, three away from the axiometry. So one, two, three. That would be another point on that graph. But you can use the axiometry to find another point on the graph. So this was one, two, three away from the axiometry. So one, two, three. That should be another point in the graph. So even though this point um, I did not find anywhere um, in my work, I know this point, the graph on that line, or that, I mean that parabola, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, negative 10 with that point, 6, negative 10. So on the test, I'll ask you to find another point, and that'd be a great way to find another point, do the axis symmetry. Okay. So there I've graphed the parabola, and now I'm going to go ahead and find the domain of this parabola. What can X be? Look like, I look at the original problem. That can be pretty much anything in here. Nothing will um, go crazy if I put any value in red. But also look at this graph here. Um, this x will go on forever here and here. So this x value will always have a value there. So from negative infinity to infinity. The range is what is the smallest value of y this graph can be? Well, this y goes on. Well, this graph goes on forever. So this y value can be from negative infinity. And the highest y value if you go up. Here, the highest y value that you see is going to be that 8. Can we include that 8? In parentheses around the negative infinity. And that would be my um, range there. Okay. Okay, so on your own, go ahead and do the na next problem. And I want you to graph this quadratic function. I want you to use those four steps that I just did there. I'm um, labeling 1, 2, 3, 4. And then graph your parabola. And then go ahead and state uh, the domain and range for that parabola. And then we will. Um, and I'll go ahead and have you uh, do another example. We'll, we'll do another example. So go ahead and pause the video and try the problem. Okay, so I went ahead and completed the problem, and I went ahead and determined that this graph or the parabola opens down because of this negative sign here. The vertex is 1, 4. The axis symmetry be x equals 1. To find the x-intercept, I substitute to uh, 0 and for y, and then to solve for x, I subtracted 4 from both sides, I got this. And I divided both sides by negative 1 to get rid of this right here. And I ended up with 4 equals quantity x minus 1 squared. And then I went ahead and reversed it, so I can get the square root property right here. And so I get x minus 1 equal plus or minus square root of 4. x minus 1 equal plus or minus 2. And then add a 1 to both sides. So I get x equals 1 plus or minus 2. So I get 2 value for x. I get 3 and negative 1. So my two x-intercepts are 3, 0 and negative 1, 0. To find the y-intercept, I put in 0 for x. And when I did that, I got this value right here, um, negative 1 squared, which I got to be 1. The negative sign in front of it, plus 4, I get 3. X intercept, I mean the Y intercept is 0, 3. So when I had sketched all the points I had, I have the vertex, the Y intercept, and the two X intercepts. I came up with this point 2, 3 based on um, the axis symmetry. I went ahead and reflected this across the axis symmetry at that point. So I drew my parabola. And the domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. And the range is from negative infinity to 4. And for all parabolas that we have, all the domains are always going to be negative infinity to infinity. Because all parabolas are going to have some kind of a, uh, some kind of equation where x can be anything. It's not going to ever be a, a fraction or a radical or anything like that. Okay? So go ahead, and this is the end of this video. I'm going to go ahead and start the next video in just a second. Um, or the next part, we'll do more, more examples. And so this will be the end of part one.